abana nimpano ziva mwijuru we are just stewards we are managers god has given us you know children to direct them into the ways of the lord by the fact that you know we ignore that principle we are disobeying the lord how much time do you take twese tufite zo shingano wari wabitekereza nuko bango aba bana imana yambaye ntabwo narimba kwiriye nta kintu gihambaye nakoze kugira ngo mbabone ariko ku imana yarabampaye mbere yuko bitwa banje nabimana mbere yuko bitwa banje nabimana bivuga ngo narahamagawe kugira ngo mbayobore mu nzira z'umwana majana ho umwami narababwiye ngo ushize leadership ubuyobozi nuko gira gute nuko yobora ubwoko abo bahawe kuyobora aho umwami ashaka ugafata ma initiative ni wewe wicha ugafata ma initiative how will i do that kugira ngo mbashire aho umwami ashaka you know abantu ufite muvandimwe tukicare ngo uryame usinzire muke bwire as if abana arabawe imana yaguhaye gusa kugira ngo eh kaba abandi bo mu baroma ba abusing the authority they had akin to absolute authority bakagira ngo abana ni possession ni bimwe nkibishimbo cyangwa ibigori ukoresha ukushaka no izirimwe gusa y'umugisha it is to obey the lord mm. obey the lord that is where you find the fullness of blessings it is in the presence of the lord that's why he says in the presence of the lord there is a fullness of joy Uh, let's uh, turn to Colossians. Colossians uh, chapter 3. Uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3, we're reading from verse 22 to up to chapter 4, verse 1. Aba Korosai, tu asoma igichaga tatu, mrongo wa makumyabili nakabili, tukeze kumurongo wa mbelewe igichachakane. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 22 to chapter 4, verse 1. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with the sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your born servants Justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Heavenly Father, we bless your name this morning. We thank you for the gift of life you've given to us. We bless your name, Lord. Humbly, I come before you this morning, acknowledging your supremacy your incomparableness totally unable to deliver your word apart from your strength apart from your anointing apart from your power and so lord out of the abundance of your love out of the abundance of your mercy out of the abundance of your grace use me as a weak vessel to be a blessing to many. Open our eyes this morning, Lord, that we might be able to behold wonderful things that are written in your law. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yes, um, friends, we continue our exposition of the book of Colossians. And remember, we've been talking about, you know, the principle of the supremacy of Christ Jesus. The principle of the lordship of Christ. 
the principle of the rule of Christ. The principle of the incomparableness of Jesus Christ. And starting all the way from chapter 1, you know, Paul has been applying, you know, this principle to your personal life. You know, by showing you how actually the Lord has redeemed you. How the Lord has, you know, transferred you from the kingdom of darkness and has brought you into the kingdom of his beloved son. He has, you know, started by showing you how you have power that operates in you. The power of the Lord Jesus Christ that enables you to live a life that honors the Lord. How do we know that? He said it in chapter 2. He said, he has won over the authorities and rulers. He has disarmed them. He has publicly, you know, put them, you know, to shame. And so, in other words, you have a possibility. You have a power. Not your own power. It is not about, you know, the power that emanates from you. But it is the power that comes from the fact that you've been united to Jesus Christ. And that power of God operates within you. It is for this reason, though you fight with the world, though you fight with the devil, though you fight with the flesh, but you're not fighting for victory no more, but you fight from victory. Why? Because Christ has won over the world. Christ has won over the flesh. Christ has won over the demonic realm, the devil. So, you are no longer under the authorities of darkness. That is what we've been talking about. And then we want to bring, no, he applied that. Then he brought this principle of the supremacy of Christ Jesus, not only to the personal life, but he also brings it, you know, to the, you know, life in the church. Now, wherever I am, I don't only have to demonstrate the rule of Christ in my life, but it has to be visible in the local church, in the way we relate to one another, in the body of Christ Jesus. How do we relate with one another? Actually, demonstrates how much more we are under the rule of Christ Jesus. We moved into that. Then he brought actually that same principle. He brought it, you know, to not only the life in the local church, but he brought it, you know, to the life in the family, life in our homes. He says, you don't only demonstrate the rule of Christ, the incomparableness of Christ, the supremacy of Christ to your personal life, but you also demonstrate it in the way you relate to one another, in the body of, the, of Christ. Not only that, but you also demonstrate it in the way you live with your wife, with your children at home. You know, when people see you, they see visibly the manifestation of the rule of Christ in your life. And then, while we were still there, what did we talk about? He was actually calling women, you know, wives, you know, submit your husbands as unto the Lord. Submit your husbands. It is one of the things that will help you see and others see how Christ rules over your life. Friends, remember, we say that, you know, the theme of the entire book of Colossians is that, you know, believers are complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ. All the resources that we need in order to live a godly life, all the resources that we need in order to live a life that honors God are not found outside of Jesus Christ, but they are found in the Lord. Because the Bible says, in him are treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him, there is everything, everything I need in order to live a life that honors God. Then he turns, you know, to men and says, men, how do you demonstrate the rule of Christ in your life? By loving your wife. Love your wife as Christ in love, did they? The church. And we, did, we, we, we say it is not this kind of romantic love. It's not, it is not, no, it is a self, a self-sacrificial love. A love that mirrors that love of Jesus Christ. A love that loves. You know, we were not lovable. The Bible says that we were not lovable. We were terrible. Looking at our state, we were terrible. But the Lord looked at us, you know, out of his abundance of grace, out of his abundance of mercy, out of his abundance of love. And he loved us. When we did not deserve it. When we, we were not lovable. And so he says, now, as you love your, your wife, as you love your wife, love as Christ loved the church. When we did not deserve it. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, ah, I'm feeling like love, loving you today. That, no, no, no. Love. Always. 
sacrificially. Sacrificially. Definitely, she will do terrible things. But you have to love. You have to love. As Christ, you know, loved. Then he turned to children. He said, no. Children, how do you demonstrate? How do you demonstrate the supremacy of Christ Jesus in your life? It is, you demonstrate it by obeying your parents. He says that, you know, he has brought, you know, parents. Pa parents have, you know, this special, unique of authority into your life. And one of the ways that you demonstrate that Christ is your ruler, that Christ is your master, it is by the way you obey your parents. If you continually disobey your parents, then you're contradicting the fact that, you know, Christ is ruling over you. You obey the parents. One of the signs, one of the evidences that actually, you know, Christ is the Lord over you. You're doing it for the Lord. Amen? You know, we talked about, you know, some motives. What, we say, what are the motives for children, you know, to obey their parents? Number one, we say, because it is right. In fact, in the Colossians, he says, it is because it pleases the Lord. Because it is pleasing to the Lord. Imagine, you know, in heaven, your heavenly father is pleased by the fact that you obey your parents. Then we say that you know Paul expanded it, you know, in, in Colossians, in Ephesians chapter 5. He added more on that on those motives. And what did he say? He says, number one, number two, by the he says number two, because it is it is right. Why? Is it referring, you know, to the creation order? He's saying that, you know, the fact that, you know, if you go to all the cult, even including those ones who are not believers, they know that it is right to obey parents. Even people who are not Christians. Why? Because, you know, by the fact that man is made in the image of God, God has impl 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 implanted, you know, the knowledge of him in him so that people definitely they know that it is right to obey parents. So what was, you know, Paul talking about? He was saying that, you know, look at this. It is actually woven into the very fabric of creation. It's right. A fortiori. They know. What we say that in Romans chapter 1. Excuse me. But people, you know, wanted to distort. To twist the truth of God's word. But they know. Deep in their mind. Because they are made in the image of God. And God has implanted his knowledge in their minds. And so Paul says, number one, it is. Number two, it is, it is, it is what? It is right. You have no excuse, friends. Excuse of it. Number two, three, he says, it is commanded. You know, he has explicitly commanded it in the word of God. That you are to, actually he was quoting, you know, from Exodus chapter 20. Where he say, children obey your parents. It has been commanded. If you disobey your parents, you are denying the rule of Christ in your life. You're saying, in other words, you know, that Christ is not my Lord. And number three, what did he say? The, the, the third motive. He says, we have to obey our parents. Why? Number three, he says, because, because, because God is going to bless us. God is going to bless us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Why? Because you've just done your duty. Because you've just done your duty. I will bless you. How gracious our Lord is. How gracious our Lord is. Sometimes, you know, the devil lies to us. 
umwanza katubeshe katubwira ngo dore nzira y'umugisha ngo nuko bahuka imana uga shortcut nibindi but i'm telling you the truth no no nina ku mwanzi yaje abwira eva mu butayo ari muri eden aramubwira ngo dore nzira ibyo imana yaravuze gutye did god really say this and this atangira gutwishitinga kuri ku imana amubwira ngo dore aho wabonera umugisha urasa ni imana uragira ubwengero agira gute but that is a lie a lie a lie na mugisha na mugisha ubonerwa mu kubaho ku imana is it me gusa yumugisha it is to obey the lord mm. obey the lord that is where you find the fullness of blessings it is in the presence of the lord that's what he says in the presence of the lord there is a fullness of joy you don't find blessing you know by disobeying the lord no he says you have to do it and the lord is going to bless to bless glory to god can you imagine bibiliya vango Muku wango ababisha ibana. You know, I'm di, konda tinda kuri kikino, kuwera kuko, le monde turimo uyumonsi. Nicho kitu manarimo, ilimira influencing abana. No longer people, tibuwa ababisha ibana. Isi kabijisha freedom, liberte kuwa huka. But the freedom that the Bible talks about, it is freedom to obey the Lord. Not freedom to disobey the Lord. Hallelujah. Obedience unto the Lord. Then he turns, you know, to parents. He turns to, you know, Bibiria na kinu na kinu ya tige zivuga ho. He turns to parents, he says, Babjei, Babjei, now you are called to parent your children not in a way that, you know, di, you know discourages them. What did he say in the book of Psalms? Children, are a gift from the Lord. Alavu wangu, ava anava anyu, nimba ano, iva mgizuru. Mere yuko umva kuko ava ana, alava awe. First of all, uzu umve kuko ava ana, alava umami. Alava imana ya guhai. It is not me saying that. It is the scriptures that you know, the children, children are a gift from the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uvandi mge joni. Abana, nimba no ziva mngizuru. We are just stewards. We are managers. God has given us, you know, children to direct them into the ways of the Lord. By the fact that, you know, we ignore that principle, we are disobeying the Lord. How much time do you take? Tweze tu fitizo shingano. Wari wabi teke nizadu kwa wangu. Ababa hanima na yambai. Na guna limba kwiri. Na kinugi hambai na koza kukira ngomba boni. Aliko kuima anara bambai. Mbere yu koba itu kwa banji. Na abimana. Mbere yu koba itu kwa banji. Na abimana. Bifuga ngo. Nara hamaga wa kukira ngomba. Yobore muzi ya zungami. Majana humami. Nara wabuge ngushi ze. Leadership. Ubu yobozi. Nuku gira kutengu. Nuku yobora. Ubu goko. Awa wa hawa kuyobora. Awa mga mashak. Ugafatama initiative. Ni wewe wicha ugafatama initiative. How will I do that? Kukirangomba shire ahu mga mashaka. You know, ava anufite. Mufandi mge. Tu kicha lengurgame usinzi ire. Uche bugi ire. As if ava anaraba au. Ima anagu hayo kusa kukirango. Eh? Kama bandi wa mubaroma. Ba abusing aga the authority. They had akin to absolute authority. Baka kukirango ava anani possession. Nibi mge nkibi shimbo. Changu bigori. Ukwere sukusaka. No. No. Children, but she ain't gonna murah, murah me, There's one day we're going to stand in front of the throne of God. Can you give our Father's chant? I don't know how much to talk about in the man. But we must not take accountability. We must not take it to our courage. I want to go high. I want to be good. I want to be good. I want to be good. Is that it, Tuazo? Is how it was. Then we talked about you know, two motives. Motive number one. As you parent your children. As you discipline them. Number one. You, you don't have to, to parent them in a way that you know, discourages them. That's number one. Negatively. Positively, you have to bring them into the fear of the Lord. Bring them into the fear of the Lord. 
And then for two reasons. Number one, impamvu ya mbere zabigutera. Uzabikora kugira ngo utaje kwisanga ngo kozamakosa. Motif. Am I doing it you know for the benefit for the best interest of this child? Mbere yuko hano umwana, mbere yuko umwereka inzira, mbere yuko umukosora, uzo wiyibusa wibwire ngo ko ndabikora ntayo bawe numushinya mfite. Ko ndabikora ntayo bawe nizindi mpamvu, ahubwo impamvu ya mbere nuko gira ngo uyu mwana mutunganye. Bizakurinda ku discipline umwana nabi. How many children niba muza musoma ibinyamakuru if you read whatever abana bangahe biyahura buri munsi. Because of their parents. Because of their parents. You've never sat with your children. You don't love your children. You don't sit with your children. You are strange to your children. You are strange to your children. They are not assuming your responsibilities. You are not assuming your responsibilities. How? It is impossible. For parents, we will shoot you. No one. It's not possible. Now, if you are going to do this, 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 no. It's not going to happen. And number two, you know, because our man is a man, he is going to do this. 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 Is it going you know, to glorify the Lord? Nusanga, uwayo wadwa nibi indi, nindi motives. Zitari motives, zigami zegue shima anitu wa hiru mzuki ya kukora. Then you need to stop. You need to stop. Glory to God. Now, did he stop from there? No, he didn't. He didn't. Paul continues, you know, to apply this same principle of the rule of Christ. This same principle of the incomparableness of Christ. This same principle of the supremacy of Christ. Not only to our personal life, not only to our life in the church, not only to our life in our homes, but also to our work. What did he say? He says it, you know, from verses, uh, verses you know, 20, 22. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people please us, but with a sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, verse 23, whatever you do, work hardly as for the Lord and not for men. Now, Paul is actually today applying the principle of the rule of Christ, the lordship of Christ, you know, to our work relationship. Relationships, how we live and operate in our work relationships. How we live. You know, Paul sets forth what it means for Christ to be Lord in the workplace in this passage. He sets forth the principles which are forever practical and applicable. And actually, when you look at this passage, there are four principles. But because of time, I'm going to talk a little bit about you know one principle. The rule of Christ. Number one. Christ in our lives. Number two. We are called to be not only in your personal life, not only in the, you know, in, in the life in, in, in the church, not only in, you know, in your home life, but also where, where you work, in your work, in your work, please. Glory to God. Glory to God. The principle, the principle of the rule of Christ. Here is principle number one. Let me jump a lot of things. And immediately, I, you know, I wanted first, you know, to start talking about, you know, you know, people, uh, many scholars have criticized Paul. Paul, did you know that? They criticized Paul, talking about, you know, when you look at, you know, chapter 4, verse 1, he says, masters, masters. It, you know, they were saying, you know, how come that, you know, Paul is endorsing 
is endorsing, you know, slavery. Especially, you know, in Africa, we, we know the history of slavery. And if you talk about that, you know, people will, you know, we know how much we've suffered. And so some scholars would criticize Paul and say, how, it's like, you know, he's endorsing, you know, slavery. He's not attacking slavery. What, what he, would, he ought, you know, to be doing. But, you know, that is, they are missing the point. Paul is not endorsing slavery. But he's talking about, you know, the implications of the rule of Christ. The implication of the incomparableness of Christ in every area of our life. So if I had time, I will talk about that. But let me jump immediately into the point. And the first principle that we see is actually here. You know, that was whatever you do, do it as if you're doing it for the Lord. Whatever you do. If you call up yours. If you call up yourself, as if you are doing it for the Lord. Whether you are alone, whether you are in the church, whether you are at home, whether you are at work, do it as if you are doing it for the Lord. Friends, if we all, if we all obey that, you know, this world will be a different world. If you could have your servant go, Waburi Wenin, Waburi Mikanisa, Waburi Muhira, Waburi Mukazin, Uzubi Kora, Ngahongo, Ama, so you will take Arimo Akureb, Awagas. Before you do everything, everything, you know, the Bible says that whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That is First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Warga, wanywa, wakorango, it's too corrupt to say, go, Musa movie corango gravute. Now imagine Nibangi Hanu, it's on Gago Kratos and Kazamba and Gavangos. Am I going to do it for the glory of God? Eric, easy, easy. Was Usiga Mafarangara Mohan, Umunakaza Kayacha Hogahosuka, Unakafa Takara Ushaka, Uwata Ifarangan Indi. Why? Because our aim is. Do I do it for the glory of God? And that's why God is calling us to do it. You know, it is shame on me. Why? Because even me who is preaching to you, I'm weak, friends. I don't do it. And that's why I cry to the Lord. That God help us. God help us. God help us. Help us. All of us, preachers, pastors, whoever, Whatever you do, do it as to the Lord. If you call it a mudam wow, umugore wow, uzu was when was Nyakubik, Ibi, Nungekufu, Ubu don't get quit quaram, Motifiam, be it as a waste we take to you. If don't get Kufuka, I'm Kazendi Kunganaban, even Gekukora, even Gekufuka. Mirajaku, need to give your principle twice, twice. Your do fashion. Ariko, it's on a river than go. Ibiba Bajanuko, Yaba Mneb, Yaba Nanji, Urimuba Giriza, Biratuna Nirakesh. We fail. But you know, the Bible says that uh, we have our advocate. We have our advocate. Sometimes you know the devil will tell you that now you're off. Ejoa Tukanye, Ejoa Koziki. Don't even go to church. No, we struggle. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Go to the Lord. He says, We have our advocate. If you confess your sins, Lord. Help me. Glorious God. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours forever, forever. Oh. <clears throat> so many times we fail. So many times we fail to live. A life that honors you. But our hope, our hope, you know, will not come you know, from the valleys. 
our hope will not come from anywhere else. The Bible says that our hope comes, comes from the Lord. Oh, may the heavens and the earth. Utavarugwa kwa atu, mbaragaza atu, na hani viva. Nige tunani lugwa, nige vita genda, wala vuzengo. Tukiru kila tukusabe. Zongira kado tukwa miki mbaraga. Zongira tukusabe. Mwana tijara vuzengo se. Tuzongira uka tukusabe kandi. Uli not revive us, Lord. Oh. Will you not revive us? Oh, will you not revive us, Lord? So that we will live what it means to be submissive to your rule, to your supremacy, to your incomparableness, to bless us, Lord, as we continue to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>